Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. God still heals today. We're going to look at the doctrine of healing in the book of Matthew because sometimes, you know, you're in the back of your Bible, it'll have like a list of 38 healings Jesus did or something like that. But really, his ministry of healing was far more extensive than that. Now, we're gonna, not going to look at all the miracles like the loaves and the fishes and the walking on the sea and the calming of the the storm and even maybe some instances of demon possession. We're just going to look specifically at healing today. And so we're going to start towards the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Matthew 4, verse 23. You can turn there if you'd like. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And here's what he did, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So, and he said these signs would follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they would recover. A lot of people say, well, now that we've got a Bible, we don't need healings. Well, I disagree with that. I think that healing still serves as a confirmation of the truth of the gospel. And there's many thousands of people that have been healed in the name of Jesus. Now, there's charlatans and stuff out there. And, and in a sense, you know, I know the amazing Randy and the uh, secular response team or something like that, that, you know, those, whatever, they're atheists, secularists, skeptics, and all this kind of stuff. But in a sense, I like it when they expose false practitioners because there's no need to make anything up. We're not the healers anyhow. Jesus is. If we lay hands on somebody, pray for them. If they get healed, glory to God. He did it. If they don't, between them and God, not between us. And so healing does exist today. And so look at this, verse 24, Matthew 4, doctrine of healing in Matthew. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers or diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. So healing, first of all, it shows the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ. And so I've seen healing become like a dog and pony show to people. And people worship the healing more than they worship Jesus. No, it should always be all about Jesus Christ. So this is amazing. We don't know how many dozens, hundreds, or thousands of people were healed here. But there were many. It wasn't just a one-time thing. And so then when we get to uh, Matthew chapter 8, it said, Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, great on the deity of Jesus, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Whoa! He broke the law. No, he didn't, because he cleansed the leper. He t touched him and saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And so then you have a centurion that indications are wasn't even a Jew. And it says, verse 13 of Matthew 8, And Jesus said unto the, unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, be, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. So notice, he didn't even have to lay hands on him. He just sent his word and healed them. Now, let's look at verse 16 of Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. We don't know how many dozens, hundreds, thousands, we don't know. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah or Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. And that's one of the scriptures where a lot of people say that healing is in the atonement. And it is by his stripes we were healed. But it's, it's a little different because Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Timothy, use a little NyQuil for your stomach's sake. You're off infirmities, you know. Um, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. So it's not an every time thing for the Christian. But it is, you know, in James 5, you lay hands on the sick, anoint him with oil, pray the prayer of faith. Healing comes and it says if they committed any sins, it's forgiven them. So it is by his stripes we're healed. 
So let's just keep going here on healing. Um, they brought unto Jesus a man sick with the palsy. And then Jesus forgives his sins. That was radical because only who can forgive sins but God only. Exactly. Jesus is God. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. He arose and departed into his house. So it was a, a palsy. God healed the palsy. God can steal him. While you're listening to this, as the Word of God's going forth, the Spirit of God's there, God can heal you today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The gifts of healing are still in the church. The gifts of the, the Holy Ghost have not ceased. All right. So, the woman, issue of blood, 12 years. Little girl, about 12 years of age. I like how those numbers are congruent sometimes in Scripture. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about. When he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. The woman was made whole from that hour. Touched the hem of his garment. Now, there was a bunch of people that touched the hem of his garment. We'll get into that. And it's in Mark as well. And uh, But this woman said, I've got to fight through the crowd. Friend, if you'll touch the hem of Jesus' garment, you'll be healed. Now, a lot of people say, well, he's a high priest and bells and pomegranates. And there was a, a rumor, a legend amongst the Jews that if you could touch the hem of the high priest's garment, there was healing and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, Jesus was our high priest. But I think it just means there was a lot of power going out of him. And as just a regular Jewish male, he had the ribbon of blue that reminded of keeping the commandments of God, the holiness of God, or virtue. And virtue went out of him because he was holy. And so then this little girl um, is dead. And he says, wait, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. They laugh him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose. The little girl arose. So Jesus can raise people from the dead. And he raised his own body from the dead. Amen. And Verse 27 of Matthew 9, when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And I love this, how Jesus and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man know of it. You know, blind people get their eyes, they can see. And he says, see, no man know of it. But two blind men, whew, their eyes were open. Your eyes can be opened in the name of Jesus, physically and spiritually. If it doesn't happen, now Jesus died on the cross for us. He born, rose again. If Jesus never heals your sick body, Get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name, receive his salvation. But God does still heal. Okay, look at this. John 9, 35. We don't know how many got healed here. And Jesus went into all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the, the people. So there's no hard cases. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, born blind, born lame, doesn't matter. When the, when the Creator gets involved, healing goes forth. Hallelujah. And uh, so then in verse 10, before they had the Holy Ghost, look what he did to his 12 disciples. He gave unto them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Friend, I'm going to tell you, if we've got a better covenant established upon better promises, apostolic ministers, you got power in the name of Jesus. Let's use it in the name of Jesus. So he says, verse 8, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you've received, freely give. 
So sometimes in Pentecost, they people don't like, they get kind of scared about healing. I'm not scared at all about healing. I believe God can break out in healing. I believe God could clean out Phoebe Putney where they filmed Fireproof here in Albany, Georgia. He could clean it out in the name of Jesus because he's the great healer and all glory would go to him. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Now, John the Baptist sent disciples. He's in prison. He's questioned a little bit. Jesus said this. Here's what you tell those disciples. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Look at that. Blind receive their sight. Lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. Deaf hear. Dead are raised. Why? Because he's God. God can heal his creation. And I'm believing for a great revival of healing, but more than anything, great revival of salvation. It's the gospel. It confirms the gospel. It doesn't take the place of the gospel. Now, in 12 and 15, it says, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence and great multitudes followed him, maybe 25,000, and he healed them all. And I've got reasons for saying 25,000. That's actually other videos I've mentioned that in. He healed them all. All. Let's say one in 20 were sick. Well, you've just had a thousand healings. Why? Because he's, Jesus is still in the church today. He can still heal everybody. Verse 22 of Matthew 12. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So sometimes a, a demon will cause sickness. So he cast the devil out and healing went forth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now people say, are you saying you're Jesus? Of course not. That's the stupidest thing in the world. I'm probably the furthest thing from Jesus that's ever existed. What I am saying is every born again believer, you've got the creator on the inside of you. The gifts of healing are still in the church and you can see healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. Not none of this fake prophecy junk that goes around, but I'm talking about legitimate healing healings in the name of Jesus. Now Jesus went to his hometown and look what happened. And he, not, he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Man, you've got to believe. We used to sing a song, healings that go forth. Only believe all things are possible. Only believe, only believe, only believe. You know, all things are possible. Man, healings that go forth there. And, uh, so only believe. Uh, John 14, 2, and said unto his servants, this is John the Baptist. He's risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. That was Herod the Tetrarch talking. Think about that. The, there were so many healings, so many thousands we've read about here. Just thousands getting healed in this little countries far smaller than the the size of the state of Florida and he's like mighty works are going forth out of Jesus hallelujah in every city and municipality wouldn't it be great if it was the reputation of the apostolic New Testament church mighty works were going forth there Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick notice great multitude and he healed their sick. It didn't matter diverse sickness. It didn't matter if it was leprosy, blindness, death, whatever it was, he healed them. Diseases, sickness, didn't matter how many there were either. Now let's look at Matthew 14 verses 35 and 35, the doctrine of healing in the book of Matthew. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. So they went into all the country round about, touched the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made whole. So it wasn't just that lady. There was, you know, hundreds, thousands here that touched and were made whole. Notice sickness was a lack because it always said they were made whole. Now, um, 
a woman that wasn't Jewish said, my, I need my daughter healed. Just like that centurion. Jesus didn't even have to go to them. He sent his word and healed them. Verse 28 of Matthew 15. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very Hour. And then amazing things happen. Verse 30, great multitudes came unto him, having with him those that were lame, blind, dumb, couldn't speak, maimed. That means they were missing body parts. Lame means they couldn't move, function right. Maimed, missing body parts, and many others, and, were, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw that the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole. Lepers, you know, losing body parts, whatever. They got them back. The lame to walk and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Great, so thousands. Hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands. They brought them. Word had gone out. They're just like, bring them, whosoever will. So we, we need that in the name of Jesus. Now, verse 4 of chapter 16, a wicked adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And so that's the reason I think we see less miracles today than we used to is because it's an evil and adulterous generation and they're just wanting the dog and pony show instead of the healer. You need the healer as well as your healing. You need the Christ and the Savior as well as your miracle. All right. So, and we go out in the name of Jesus. All right. Verse 18 of Matthew 17. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. I'm talking about healing in the name of Jesus. Um, I thought that was a mark for healing, but it was actually a, a Roman numeral two. Sorry about that. All right. Matthew 19 and two and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. Now notice, and he came under the coast of Judea beyond Jordan and he healed great multitudes. He healed them there. So the doctrine of healing in the book of Matthew, sometimes it's, it's uh, more expansive than we give it credit for. When Jesus came in on the triumphal entry, um, we'll read some other things here. Behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, Lord, have mercy on us. Saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And they say unto him, verse 33, Lord, that our eyes may be open. This is Matthew 20. So Jesus had compassion on them, touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. We'll look at some other things here. At least one more. If, uh, if I can find my marking. All right. Verse 14, Matthew 21. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Healing in the book of Matthew. The doctrine of healing in the book of Matthew. Multitudes. Thousands, friend, let's see God do that in the name of Jesus all over this world. See people come to God in Jesus' name, amen.